it's a great pleasure to be here and a very big thank you to the Institute IIEA for hosting us here today and a very big thank you to Tom Arnold who was a member of the 2020 Advisory Council that supported this conference and uh, we very much appreciate his leadership all the way through. A very big thank you to Irish Aid for their partnership and uh, support of this 2020 conference in Addis and also Ernan for the previous two 2020 conferences in Delhi and Beijing, and I hope it's a continuation of a great tradition. We are also delighted to be here together with our friends, our many, our many friends in Ireland, Nick, Connell, and it's a wonderful partnership. So why this conference? As Nora mentioned, we had the conference on building resilience in Addis, brought together 800 people. 2020 organizes conferences every three to four years on what we see as big emerging issues. And let me try and see if I can, you know, um, the motivation for this conference was the recognition that we are being hit hard by a barrage of shocks. Shocks that are familiar, some of them, and shocks that are not so familiar. But what is becoming more clear is that shocks are becoming more frequent, that they're becoming more intense, and they're evolving, and we are prey to some more unexpected developments and shocks. And that was what motivated us to try and bring people together to understand how do we build resilience to shocks, and as we do so, how do we improve uh, uh, and uh, build up our capacity to not just cope with shocks, but thrive. And you were asking, Nora, how do we define resilience? And the way we defined resilience at the conference was essentially helping people, communities, countries, and global institutions prevent, anticipate, prepare for, cope with, and recover from shocks. Not just one of them, but that whole continuum. And not only bounce back to where they were before the shocks, but to become even better off. Many of the earlier definitions of resilience stop at just bouncing back. And for us, it's important that as we build resilience, it is we're building a platform for improving your livelihoods as we go along. The key messages that we took away from the conference and that I want to highlight here are four. One was the importance of better assessing and predicting the impact of shocks. And there, improving resilience does require better data and information on the risks, responses, and what are best practices. Second message was to draw upon the local knowledge and resources. And there, the key message that is that attempts to improve resilience should not crowd out existing mechanisms that work well. And related to that, the importance of understanding the role of communities and the role of social capital and networks in building resilience. And I have to give credit here to Concern that has really highlighted that issue from your work around the world. Third key message, pay attention to excluded groups. Include the most vulnerable people in the decision making, in design, in implementation, and in the frontline work on resilience. And the fourth key message was to identify better approaches to building capacity at all levels. Resilience is about capacity, about ability, and about capability. And people and communities are at the center of resilience. And building the capacity means building the capacity of individuals. And nutrition is an essential component of individual capacity. And that's what brings us to this session here today on nutrition and resilience. The last thing I'd like to do is to leave with you a message from one of the speakers in the closing session of the conference, where Stefan Schmidt from Germany said, the more resilient people, communities, countries, and systems are, the more likely it is that we will achieve ambitious post-2015 goals and vice versa. The more we invest in achieving such goals, the more resilient people are. It's particularly apt because I understand Ireland is going to co-lead uh, together with Kenya the post-2015 uh, discourse and indicators and so forth. And I would just like to underline there the role of resilience in helping us achieve the post-2015 discourse. Thank you very much. Thank Schengen you very audios. much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right.